Hello and welcome to our program. Alternate forms of medicine have been a source of great healing for many. Yet, there is so much that we don't know about these ancient sciences. Our guests today are two people who are specialists in one such form. Please welcome Dr. Raman Kapoor and Dr. Sunita Kapoor. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Thank you I just want to start with this journey. You are traditional MBBS doctors and both of you moved on to acupuncture as a specialization. Starting with you, Dr. Raman, how did this transition happen? Right after I had finished my MBBS and I was preparing for my post-graduation examination, my sister and brother-in-law who are doctors in Australia, they were visiting us for a holiday. And coincidentally, they talk just hovered around to what field I used to wanting to specialize in. And I said, I want to specialize in internal medicine. So they said, why don't you go in for something new? I said, what is that? He said, it is catching up like wildfire in Australia at that time. I said, what is that? He said, it's acupuncture. I said, I've never heard about it in India. And I would not like to venture out into a new field. Because I was afraid. Right. But they said, no, no. Uh, I think we've seen a lot of our colleagues in Australia who are practicing in Adelaide and they have had very good results in pain management particularly and the results are very gratifying. So I think since you have a time gap about six months between your internal examination uh, for post graduation and your starting of the results, so why don't you take a chance and go to Beijing? So I think destiny had been probably made that way and I believe in destiny a lot so I thought well, there is a time gap, so I must take advantage of it. And I went to Beijing and did a six-month course there. And thereafter, I stayed six months more to do more practical training, hands-on. And after one year, I came back and started acupuncture practice. And the most interesting aspect of the training part was that I myself had been suffering from a very chronic sinusitis problem throughout my medical career. And I remember in Sajjajing Hospital where I used to do my medicine, there, was, there would not be a month wherein I would not be on antibiotics and I would be constantly on evil. In those days we used to have evil tablets right. and nasal drops. Mm -hmm. And I even went on to the extent of getting my sinuses uh, 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 drained out. Okay. But still they would come back. So there was no cure available. And when I went to China, I had these symptoms within the first 10 days of my reaching there. And the professor in the class noticed me sneezing and coughing. And he called me after the class and asked me if you have any problem. I said, I told him the whole history. Mm -hmm. So he said, would you not like to start acupuncture? I said, no, no problems. Although I was a bit afraid of acupuncture needles initially. But when I first took my first needles, I was surprised. It didn't pain me at all. It was just as if somebody has given you a small bite. Okay. That's about all. Mm -hmm. And I took it very uh, easily and over a period of the next three months I was totally cured. So for a disease which had been with me for about seven to eight years and for which there was no cure I, I had found for that time, I myself was cured. And that probably was the first stage wherein my mind said that this is an effective therapy and I must go for it. And let me tell you, these 28 years of my medical practice of acupuncture, I've never had any sinus problem again. Uh, Dr. Sunita, what about you? How did you move to this form? Yeah, I was doing my post-graduation in pediatrics uh, from Kalavati and uh, I fell down and I, uh, I was carrying my son in my lap and I fractured my coccyx, which is the tailbone. Mm -hmm. And the fracture was so severe that it was impinging on the nerve. And the whole sciatic nerve was inflamed. And I was I showed it to my professors in Harding. And they told me to be, you know, f go on for bed rest for uh, quite a long time. And uh, it was very, very excruciatingly painful. I was taking painkiller injections every, every night. My God. And my husband was practicing acupuncture at that time. And he would tell me that you take acupuncture, it's very effective for this. But you know, like all medical mind, you know, I mm -hmm. said, no, no, I don't believe in needles. I'm going to take my professor's treatment, whatever also, they say. Dal Haan, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and being a medical doctor, you are skeptical about alternate medicines, unless and until you try it or yourself, because he also tried it on himself and he found good results. And that gave him a lot of confidence. Same thing happened with me. Initially, I refused the treatment. For 10 days, I was on bed howling. And then finally, 
I gave in. I said, okay, now you try. I okay. said, but no needles. I will take needleless treatment. I said, he said, and he had recently, uh, you know, got the laser, the soft laser, which we use on the acupuncture points from Germany. So that's also a possibility? Yes. Okay. And it works very well in acute cases. So for first two days he used the lasers and my pain went down by 50%. And that's what gave me the confidence. Mm -hmm. So I said, now you can try needle. And needle with needles, within 15 days, I was up and I started going to my hospital back. And that pain has never recurred again? Never, never. If you still, t my radiologically, if you see in the x-ray, the chip is still there. But there is no pain, no inflammation. Every, every, all the other signs of inflammations are gone. So I'm back to work, and it's been almost now 24 years, 25 years. So, so that was your experience. But yes. when did you become a convertee? So you went and so studied it. Uh, yeah, immediately I told him. I said, now I have full faith in this system. Mm. I want to learn this. So initially I learned it from him. Then of course I had to take a formal training. So I also went to China in the Beijing College okay. and took the proper treat, uh, proper um, uh, you know uh, uh, training for mm -hmm. almost one year and worked under many professors also there and came back and joined him. Starting with you, Dr. Raman, what is acupuncture? Acupuncture actually is a word formed out of two words, acus and puncture. Acus means needle, Greek and puncture means to penetrate. Okay. So a treatment which involves the use of needles uh, f uh, which are used at certain specific body points with penetration is what is acupuncture. And this is a good 5,000 year old science, traditional science in China. And the origin of this science is very beautiful if we go back to it. At, uh, they said that used to the, in the olden days there used to be war between two villages and uh, the wars used to be fought with bows and arrows. Mm -hmm. So one day there was a fight going on between two communities and an arrow went and stuck a person on his foot, on the leg, on the shin muscle. And this gentleman had a bad frozen shoulder and pain in the shoulder for last two, three years, which was not getting better with the local treatment which the doctor on those days was to giving him. So immediately as this arrow stuck him there, he realized that he could immediately lift his shoulder immediately. So with that stuck arrow in his foot, he went back to the local doctor and he showed him that arrow and then the d local doctor called up so many other people in the village who had similar problem and he stuck an arrow at the same point and he found similar results and that is the origin of the first need, uh, point of acupuncture and you will not believe it, even that particular point is known as stomach 38 and that point as I use it even today for treating a frozen shoulder and just one needle and you can make the patient lift his shoulder almost immediately. Now bringing back to the fact that how come it is still, it's an old science, it's uh, not very difficult, uh, it brings wonderful results, but why is it still not so popular in India? I think the popularity a thing is you have to understand very clearly that there are many aspects to it. One is if you see even our traditional sciences like Ayurveda, Yoga and Naturopathy and Yunani, which originated, a lot of these sciences originated in India, they are still not being properly uh, studied up or being researched in our country as a result of which their popularity is not growing even in our country. Although if you see the cost element, Ayurveda and all these are very, very cheap, mm -hmm. but still they are not popular. But the same Ayurvedic medicines, when they are being patented by the US and they come back to us, we are able to buy them and at a much higher cost, which means that our people also, all our countrymen also have been attuned to Western medicine in such a big way that everybody wants quick relief. So Western medicine is thought of giving quick relief to most of the ailments and as a result of which uh, uh, the science of uh, allopathy, although I'm an allopath myself, this has gained more popularity amongst the people. But when we actually analyze it, we should realize that most of the West Western drugs have a lot of side effects because they are chemicals and they gradually produce side effects in our body and they can produce more harm to us in the long run than produce benefit. So I'm not saying that Western medicine doesn't have its benefit. Like for example, when a surgical uh, intervention is required, there's nothing better than Western medicine. That is the best science. But in a 
chronic ailment like for example osteoarthritis of the knees wherein the joint space is gradually getting less with age and the patient is complaining of pain if in the early stage of osteoarthritis if you were to give acupuncture the results are almost 90 to 100 percent that good are the results because acupuncture works by stimulating the nerve endings by increasing the hyalase uh, the uh, the fluid in the joint which is getting dried up as we age out and by in, uh, increasing the release of endorphins and encephalins which are the pain killing substances from our own brain and as the blood level of these substances grows in the blood the patient gets relief from pain kis principle pe ye acupuncture kaam karta hai aapki body hai jo aapka pura sharir hai isi mein se dawai nikal ke kaam karta hai bilkul theek kaha aapne ab kya hai ki इसमें कई थ्योरीज हैं एक्यूपंक्चर की जिसके के ऊपर हम बेस करके सारा कुछ रिसर्च करके अब डॉक्यूमेंटेड है सब कुछ एक्यूपंक्चर आज डब्ल्यू एच रिकॉग्नाइज एक मेडिकल साइंस है जिसमें कि अगर आप डब्ल्यू की वेबसाइट पे जाएंगे तो वहां पर उन्होंने इंडिकेशंस भी दिए हुए हैं कि किन किन बीमारियों में एक्यूपंक्चर द्वारा इलाज बहुत ही कामयाब है तो एक्यूपंक्चर जो जब इसकी रिसर्च हुई तो उसमें पाया गया कि जब हम नीडल लगाते हैं तो उस वक्त हमारे ब्रेन में से कुछ केमिकल सब्सटेंस होते हैं जिनको कि एंडोरफिन और एनकेफिलेंस कहते हैं हम वो रिलीज होते हैं और ये एनकेफिलेंस और एंडोरफिनस का जब लेवल बढ़ता जाता है हमारे ब्लड के अंदर ग्रेजुअली तो पेन में ग्रेजुअली इतना रिलीफ आ जाता है कि वो कम्प्लीटली क्योर हो जाता है सो ये दीज आर पेन नेचुरल पेन किलिंग सब्सटेंसेस ऐसे ही और रिसर्च हुई मोटर रिकवरी में जैसे कि हम देखते हैं कि पेशेंट जिनको कि पैरालिसिस हो जाता है जैसे फेशियल पैरालिसिस हो गया या एक साइड का अधरंग हो गया उसमें भी एक्यूपंक्चर बहुत कामयाब है उसमें एक मोटर रिकवरी इफेक्ट देखा गया जिसमें कि जो मसल्स हैं उनको बिल्डअप करने के लिए स्पेसिफिक एक्यूपंक्चर पॉइंट यूज करते हैं जो कि मसल्स को बिल्डअप करती है ऐसे ही एक टाइप ऑफ कंडीशन होती है जिसे हम इम्यून एनहेंसिंग इफेक्ट कहते हैं जो कि ऑटो इम्यून डिजीजेज होती हैं जैसे कि एलर्जिक राइनाइटिस है एलर्जिक साइनोसाइटिस है एलर्जिक ब्रॉन्कियल आस्थमा है जहाँ पर कि अर्टिकेरिया है जहाँ पर कि आपका इम्यून सिस्टम कमजोर पड़ गया है इस वजह से बीमारी आपको हो रही है तो हमारे पास एलोपैथी में तो इन चीजों के लिए कोई खास दवाई होती नहीं जी जिससे कि इम्यून सिस्टम दोबारा से नॉर्मल हो जाए तो एक्यूपंक्चर द्वारा आप इम्यून सिस्टम बिल्डअप कर सकते हैं नॉर्मल इम्यूनिटी को वापस लेके आ सकते हैं और बीमारी को क्योर कर सकते हैं लोग आते हैं आपके पास ट्रीटमेंट लेने के लिए थके हारे लोग आते हैं uh, हर एक फॉर्म एलोपैथी ट्राई कर लिया होम्योपैथी ट्राई कर लिया अलग अलग चीजें कर ली और फिर बोलते चलो कुछ नहीं हो रहा तो फिर आपके पास आते हैं तो इससे ट्रीटमेंट में दिक्कत तो होती होगी बहुत दिक्कत होती है मेरे हिसाब से क्योंकि अगर यही मरीज हमें अर्ली स्टेज में मिल जाए तो बहुत अच्छे रिजल्ट्स आ सकते हैं और बहुत जल्दी रिजल्ट्स आ सकते हैं उससे साइंस की पॉपुलैरिटी भी बढ़ेगी और लोगों के अंदर अवेयरनेस भी बढ़ेगी और मेरा ये मानना है कि अगर किसी भी साइंस को पॉपुलर करना हो तो गवर्नमेंट का उसमें बहुत अहम रोल होता है और वो रोल इसलिए आता है क्योंकि हर एक जो इंसान है वो इस ट्रीटमेंट को अफोर्ड नहीं कर पाएगा तो अगर हम यही ट्रीटमेंट अगर हम अपने हर गवर्नमेंट अस्पताल में इंडिया के अंदर फ्री दे सकें जैसे कि आज हमारे हर अस्पताल में गवर्नमेंट हॉस्पिटल में होम्योपैथी आयुर्वेदा ये मुफ्त में उपलब्ध है जैसे कि वेस्टर्न मेडिसिन के डिपार्टमेंट होते हैं वैसे अगर एक्यूपंक्चर भी हम उपलब्ध करा सकें हर अस्पताल में तो मेरे हिसाब से कोई दिक्कत नहीं आएगी और जो इसकी पॉपुलरिटी और बढ़ेगी बिकॉज कॉमन एलिमेंट्स हैं जैसे कि सर्वाइकल स्पॉन्डिलाइटिस है आज आप देखिए यंग पीपल हैं जो कि कंप्यूटर पर बैठे रहते हैं दस दस बारह बारह घंटे लगातार उनको सर्वाइकल की प्रॉब्लम लाइफ स्टाइल डिजीज बन गया लाइफ स्टाइल डिजीज नेक शोल्डर पेन है बहुत कॉमन है और उसकी वजह से हेड होते हैं उनको ज्यादा फिर माइग्रेन हो जाते हैं सो दिस इज अ वेरी कॉमन प्रॉब्लम जिसके के लिए हिसाब से मेरे पास बहुत कॉमनली पेशेंट आने लग गए हैं एंड इट इज वेरी इफेक्टिव विद एक्यूपंक्चर इट कैन बी ट्रीटेड एंड विद इन अबाउट वन टेन टू फिफ्टीन ट्रीटमेंट्स ओनली यू कैन फुली क्योर सच पेशेंट्स इफ दे कम टू यू इन लेस देन इयर्स टाइम अगर एक साल से पहले आ जाते जी तो ये एक्यूपंक्चर uh, कौन सीख सकता है ये जो हमारे इंडिया uh, के अंदर नवंबर दो में गवर्नमेंट ने मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर ने एक लॉ पास किया जिसमें कि एक्यूपंक्चर साइंस को एक रिकग्निशन दी गई एज ए मोड ऑफ थेरेपी विच कैन ओनली बी प्रैक्टिस बाय क्वालिफाइड मेडिकल प्रैक्टिशनर्स उसमें उन्होंने पांच कैटेगरी के लोग हैं जो कि काउंसिल से गवर्न है इंडिया के अंदर जो एलोपैथी डॉक्टर हैं जो होम्योपैथ डॉक्टर्स हैं जो आयुर्वेद के डॉक्टर हैं यूनानी के और योगा और नेचुरोपैथी के ये पांचों काउंसिल्स में अगर आप किसी में भी रजिस्टर्ड हैं और आपने साढ़े पांच साल का पूरा डिग्री कोर्स किया हुआ है तो आप एलिजिबल हैं एक्यूपंक्चर सीखने के लिए और प्रैक्टिस करने के लिए 
मतलब अगर किसी ने मास्टर्स भी किया हो साइंस में और बॉडी के बारे में जानते हो वो सीख सकते हैं क्यों डॉक्टर से नहीं तो क्यों नहीं सीख सकते बिकॉज यू नो इम्पोर्टेंट इज यू शुड हैव डिसेक्टेड डेड बॉडी एंड यू शुड यू शुड बी वेरी वेल अवेयर ऑफ द इंटायर एनाटमी ऑफ द बॉडी विच आर नॉर्मल इवन इफ यू डन योर मास्टर्स इन साइंस इट्स ऑल थियोरेटिकल इन मास्टर्स देर इज नथिंग प्रैक्टिकल एंड हैव यू इन योर एक्सपीरियंस यूज दिस अलॉन्ग विद एलोपैथिक मेडिसिन Uh, yeah, because I get my patients who are already on heavily uh, on the allopathic medicines. You know, like um, if we talk about gynecological disorders, they are all on hormones. Mm. You know, progesterone, estrogens. Whether it's for the balancing their cycles, whether it's managing their menopausal symptoms, whether they are f- it's for infertility. You know, whether they are young girls with. polycystic ovarian disease whether you know people suffering from heavy uterine bleeding just because of the endometriosis or fibroids so they are heavily on hormones when i call them for acupuncture i first ask them to withdraw the hormones and when we withdraw the hormones some of them they start bleeding heavily some of them stop bleeding mm-hmm. for a month or two mm-hmm. it happens but we are trying to bring back the cycles normal so we tell them doesn't matter twice a week i call them for acupuncture till their cycles become normal it may take from 1 to 6 cycles but it becomes normal and the results have been good very very good young girls you know they are put on hormones you know or pills just for polycystic ovarian disease mm. and when we t- do acupuncture they start getting their normal periods without hormones uh, b- because hormones of course cause lot of side effects All of us know that absolutely, and they have their whole lives, the whole life, the reproductive yeah, cycle, all yeah. is in front of yes, them. You know? Yes, yes. So you know you are you have built up their entire life, Very and uh, you know uh, women who are at the menopausal stage, they start bleeding heavily, and they are all booked for you know uterine surgery, hysterectomy, mm-hmm. and we tell them you wait for two one or two cycles, we'll control the heavy bleeding with acupuncture. Uh, still there are not very major structural causes like carcinoma or anything all those we rule out first of course before taking up the cases okay. once we have ruled out the carcinoma then uh, we can handle these cases very well and most of them have been able to avoid surgeries and i think that's truly wonderful yeah uh, so of course these medication the knowledge of uh, allopathic medicine is very helpful you know my allopathy knowledge is very helpful in this case and i am able to uh, really uh, handle these uh, medicines very well and taper them off and in, in fact withdraw them at a later stage very easily so any particular case uh, i mean of course without taking names but any particular kind of a uh, a uh, problem which has been countered very well yeah because i am working a lot on infertility cases now okay. case yeah because uh, many of the patients they undergo a lot of um, in vitro fertilization and they have failed cycles because of some reason or the other so when they come to me of course when they are taking gynecological uh, treatment from some obstetricians they are giving them hormones trying to balance their cycle trying to find out the cause and manage those but still if it is unsuccessful then there has to be some some deep inner aspect which is being unhandled unha- okay so we try and uh, you know work them according to our chinese medicine we try and uh, you know balance their yin and yang energy which okay. is the main concept of chinese medicine there's there's some imbalance between the energies of the body because of which they are unable to conceive so either the quality of the egg is not good or the quantity of the egg is not good or the uterine lining is not good or the uh, axis which is between the ovary and the brain is not functioning there is some blockage somewhere so we try and analyze all these aspects and uh, uh, unblock or the flow of energy okay. in the whole body you know so related to this there is a deeply spiritual aspect yes, also to related this whole to it thing. yes of mm. course and like especially the cases infertility cases i've got such tremendous results because these people have undergone ivf and you know each ivf costs about 80000 to 1 lakh rupees which right. is very very costly mm. and plus 
uh, besides that they have uh, they undergo so much of hormone treatment which makes them feel bloated miserable mm. every day injections and mm. and just imagine uh, after spending so much after being tortured so much they don't get any results mm. this then the amount of depression they go into is unbelievable so and these uh, i have got few patients uh, or i since you have not asked mm-hmm. asked me not to take their names you know at, at a later age group also like uh, a lady who was 44 years of age had uh, three uh, failed ivfs about and last 7 years she uh, she was told by her um, gynae that uh, you have to uh, think of adopting a child you okay. can't have your own child so for the last 7 years she ha- she was not doing anything and she had stopped to even uh, trying th- to get trying to get okay. a baby and her husband was not ready for uh, adoption. for adoption mm. so she came to me and she said dr smita can you do something about it because i want a baby of my own and i looked at her at the age of 44 i got all her parameters all hormones everything done i said yeah we'll try so she took treatment for about 3 months and uh, fourth when she gave me the news that she is naturally conceived wonderful okay. and she delivered a baby just about a month back and the uh, <laughs> baby and the baby and okay. throughout the pregnancy she used to visit me once a month because we also give treatment um, with acupuncture to maintain the pregnancy okay for okay. a better growth of the fetus and for maintaining so there are no chances of any you know abortions or anything so she was because it was a very precious baby mm-hmm. so i have had many of such patients and this gives lot of satisfaction and happiness to you to especially such Truly, cases that's so. a little joyous note yeah. in fact uh, on this joyous note we'll be taking a break but when we come back we'll discuss various other aspects like the cost incurred and uh, how can one go and how frequent the treatment should be but right now we're going for a short break stay with us